Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley. Welcome to my craft room. I am super excited to be here live with you today. I'm gonna be using some brand new products from Concord and Ninth, and we're gonna create a birthday card because I need some of those birthday cards in my life. Now, let's get to a little bit of the real deal here. I am creating live today, and this is my first live, so we're hoping that all the tech is working properly. I'm gonna try to keep my eye on the comments, um, but you know, I'm learning all of this, and you guys get to be my first audience, and I'm so glad you're here. I see Roberta is here, Mindy Egan is here, Audrey, I see Tabby Cat and Debbie. Thank you, Lisa, all of you for being here. I saw someone from Ontario and um, it's apparently really cold and rainy up there today, so I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. It really means a lot to me, and like I said, we're just gonna pray that all the tech runs smoothly. We're gonna do our thing. We're gonna create a card. I'm gonna show you a couple of options using some of the brand new Concord and Ninth products, which if you haven't seen them yet, fabulous. They knocked it out of the park like they do every time. So let me go ahead and pull this off the bottom of the screen. And I do wanna say that, first of all, my goal in everything that I do, and I think I'm gonna start really saying this more, is for you to walk away from this knowing that you can do this. So every card project is a series of steps. It is getting from point A to B, and then from point B to C, and then all the steps after that. It's just a series of steps. So if you can break everything down and do it one step at a time, you can walk away knowing that you can do this too. So let's go ahead and we'll try out our first bit of tech and we'll go to the overhead here. And I have the brand new February 2023 release from Concord and Ninth. And look at this. I mean, it's so beautiful. I do have a couple of options for color palettes here today. And so I'm gonna give you guys the option to do that. Now we can go with, and you can start um, commenting in the comment section. I can see all your comments here. Um, I'm gonna put my face up here. I can still see what you're saying. We have a couple of color palette options. We can go classic Carissa right here. I would call this a classic Carissa color palette with a little bit of gold thrown in there or we can do this and we can go masculine today. Now I know that masculine card projects are one of the most asked for um, card projects on my blog. So I thought I would give you that options today. So go ahead and let me know if we're going classic Carissa, you can put a C in the comments, or if we're going masculine, put an M in the comments. So go ahead and just let me know. <laughs> That's classic, Carissa. But while you're doing that, I'm going to walk you through this brand new release. Now the, the, the pro products, excuse me, that I'm featuring today are gonna be all about cake, the stamp and coordinating die set. And I love this because it is, um, it is an interactive piece built into the stamp set. It's gonna create a layered cake, but all of these sentiments can be used on their own and I love this um, confetti piece here. Now I'm also going to bring in a sentiment from the marker turnabout stamp set, the have the best day. I love that you can pull in different sentiments from different things and um, kind of create your own custom creation. This is a turnabout stamp. We're not gonna be doing that turnabout stamping today, but I did wanna point that out. Now, coordinating with that markered turnabout is the markered messages die set. So you've got all these great sentiments here. We have the bitty banners here. I love this. There are not enough like specific baby card project products on the market in my opinion. This is great for baby, birthday, and more. Then there is a sweet B stamp set along with some coordinating dies and coordinating stencils. And of course the sending hugs, which I just popped onto YouTube um, the other day, and or not the other day, just a second ago before I went live and Laura Basson has a video up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> The, just the thumbnail image, I was like, oh, I gotta check that out. 
So today I'm gonna to be using just a couple of these products. I have the entire release linked below. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. Now, I'm gonna go through the comments here and I'm gonna see what we've all said. Masculine with pink, we've got masculine in, masculine classic Chrysler, masculine classic, oh my goodness. I think, well, maybe, maybe we're getting more classic here. Okay, I think it's a toss up. So, you know what? I'm gonna stamp both. We're only gonna create one card, but maybe then I can share um, a, a thumbnail later on that has both options in it. So what I decided to do today was to create this layered cake with the dies, but I didn't want to try to stamp the die cut pieces after they've already been die cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stamp on a piece of cardstock and then I'm going to do my die cutting of my cake layers. So I'm gonna bring in my Misty stamping tool here and I am going to grab a piece of Concord and Ninth white cardstock. If you guys are not using Concord and Ninth white cardstock, you really are missing out. It blends beautifully and it is so fabulous for foiling. So I'm gonna start by showing you what I'm gonna do. And I have to do this a few times, so I hope we can get out of here in a reasonable amount of time, especially if I'm gonna do both color palettes. But I'm gonna go ahead and just put this right here in my Misty Stamping Tool. I'm gonna pick it up with the lid, and I'm going to start with sea glass ink. So I'm just gonna ink this up. I'm gonna work light to dark because then I don't have to worry about um, really cleaning my stamp. So I'm gonna start by stamping this here right onto my white cardstock. Now, I don't know if this is the way that this is intended to be used, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove my magnet. I'm gonna shift this up and over just a teeny bit. Not, I'm not getting crazy here, not getting crazy. And I'm gonna move on to Peacock ink. Now I need to do this three times because I have three cake layers. So I'm gonna work kind of quickly here and just ink up each of these and while I'm shifting. So I can get a three color palette here. And like I said, I'm not measuring anything. I'm just going kind of just loosely up and over just a tad. And then when I die cut it out, I can die cut out the part that I like the best. So I have my three colors here of confetti. That almost has an optical illusion, huh? And then I'm going to flip this around and I'm gonna do it again. Now I will have to clean off this stamp because I went, like I said, light to dark and I don't wanna contaminate my, one of my favorite colors from Concord and Ninth is the sea glass ink. It is so beautiful. I know Aqua Sky is a super popular ink, but sea glass is like my jam. It just so beautiful. And I'm gonna start this process over again. So I'm gonna start with sea glass, stamp. I'm not gonna get all weird and precious about this. I'm just gonna scooch a little, ink and stamp. You all can do it, right? Oh my goodness, Concord and Ninth is here. Thank you guys for joining me. I love the people over at Concord and Ninth. I actually kinda like it with just the two colors as well. I'm tempted to just do the two colors. Okay, anyway, let's not, let's go with my plan. Let's not stray away. So I've had a busy day today. I've been live online all day long doing my thing, but I am glad you all have joined me here today for this live. So far, it seems like everything is working out okay. Now, I will tell you, someone said that they love the stamp pads and the ink, and, and yes, Concord and Ninth has a beautiful color palette. They make great quality inks and great quality cardstock. I'm gonna stamp my third layer here, and then we can move into die cutting. So once again, I'm just using the Concord and Ninth white cardstock. We are gonna do a little bit of ink blending on this just to give the edges a little pop on this cake. And honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do the both color palettes, but I'll show you one stamped. How's that? 
because I originally had planned the first color palette and then I was like, well, maybe I'll offer them a choice. And of course you guys went the way that I did not think we were gonna go, so. So, I have three of these stamped here. Let me flip this cardstock around and I'll show you what it looks like in what I'm calling the classic Carissa color palette with the ballet slipper, grapefruit, and sea glass. Now, if this is not a party in a color palette, then I don't know what is. So, I'm gonna start with ballet slipper, and like I said, I'm just stamping and then scooching. That's what we'll call it, stamp and scooch. So there's ballet slipper. We're gonna scooch. Using my magnet to hold my paper in place, the baby set, yes, the baby set is amazing. And thank you everybody who's coming in now, who's just making it in, so glad you're here. Let me know in the comments which of the new Concord and Ninth products that you just saw is your very favorite. Maybe that'll be what I create with next. By the way, this, this release is new today. It just hit the shop. Oh, I didn't scooch, and so I made mud. See how that is? I was talking, and that's what happens when you craft alive. But you know what? We can make it work. We're gonna start over. This is real life, people. It happens. <laughs> Kathy Zilski's here. Kathy Zilski is my friend. She helped me out a little bit with figuring out a little bit of this tech behind the scenes. So I really appreciate her because that really did make it possible. I was able to text her a question or two and she helped me out and so I really appreciate that. I knew that once I got this setup complete, I really wanted something that was like plug and play that I could just plug in my computer and be ready to go live. I knew once I got it just like locked in and dialed in, I would just have to bite the bullet one day and just go live. And so that's what I did. I know there wasn't a lot of advance. There wasn't a lot of time for people to really plan to get here, but that's okay. It looks like we've got several people here. Also, if you would not mind, I would love it if you would just go and give this video a thumbs up right now. Okay. So can you see that? It looks like an optical illusion on the camera, <laughs> which I think is so funny that it just kind of looks like that. In real life, it doesn't look quite as much of an optical illusion. But those are the two color palettes. We have Masculine, we have Classic Carissa, and maybe I'll make a second card using Classic Carissa and throw that into the thumbnail as well. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna grab my cutting plates and I'm gonna start die cutting these layers. Now, the reason I did this is because now I can really visualize how much of this confetti I want on this layer. So this is the smallest layer of the cake here, and I can kind of scooch this around until I figure out how much of this I want. So if I just want it coming in just a little bit from the top, I can scoot it down, and then what I'm gonna do is take the other two layers and do the same thing so that I get kind of the same amount. Now, if you did this and you wanted to stamp directly on the die cut cake layers, you could absolutely do that. But I like to do things in a way that makes sense in my mind and sometimes it doesn't always make sense for everybody and that's okay. So I have my cake layers lined up on these two. This is kind of overlapping and so let's just scooch that up. Now today, I do cut into my magnet. Yes, um, I feel like I get really good <laughs> cutting results when I do that. So I do cut into my magnet. It means I will have to replace my magnet probably more frequently, but that's okay because I'm not, you know, replacing my cutting pad. pad. The thing that it allows me to do is really throw my dies on here and they kind of stay in place and then I don't really need any tape to hold them in place. So now that I have all of my layers, my cake layers on here, I'm gonna go ahead and just run this through. I'm using the Anna Griffin Impress machine today. 
Let me turn it. I don't have, I don't have a um, Gemini cam like Kathy, my friend Kathy. So you just have to like know that I'm just running it through the machine. So now we have our cake layers. And I love that they've included this tab on the bottom of the cake layers for adhesive. So while we're doing our die cutting, let's just go ahead and do our die cutting, right? So I have that ready to go. And I have gone ahead and prepared some things in advance. So I have three layers of the Hooray sentiment that's in the die set that uh, coordinates with the All About Cake. That's what we're calling it, right? And then I have some adhesive backed cardstock here. So in the Concord and Ninth matte gold and the Concord and Ninth white glitter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna die cut a hooray from the white glitter. I'm gonna do a little stacking. I know I'm brave on my first live. I'm gonna do some die cut stacking. I have a couple of these foo-foo things that go on top of the cake already pre-cut, but I need three of them. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine. We do have to do a bit of die cutting for this card. So we'll do it all at once. I'm gonna grab my tweezers out while I'm thinking about it because I'll need those. And the thing I love about when I have adhesive on the back of the cardstock is everything just stays inside the cardstock for me and I'm not hunting for it. So I have that all ready to go. And I decided to do the little sticks of for to hold these little uh, pom poms. Are they pom poms? I don't know. Um, in some clear acetate. So we'll run that through. And my idea today is actually to make an easel card. So we'll we'll hope we have time to do that. Now, this is, I was a little nervous about die cutting this acetate with my Impress because I felt like it may not cut through all the way and it didn't. So I'm going to flip this. I'm going to cut it into the plate and I am gonna run it through this way and then this way. So I'm gonna run it through twice and hopefully we'll get a good cut. If we don't, then we'll just change machines because I know what I can do with the other one. And then I'll run it through again. So if you're ever having trouble die cutting a material, try running it through a couple of different ways. <laughs> Concord and Knight says they are pom-pom, sparklers, whatever I want them to be. So we'll just go with that. Okay, I'm still not getting a good cut. So we'll run that through using my Gemini Junior because I know I can put the metal plate in that. So we're gonna pivot here. Good thing everything's right here. Yes, I have a lot of die cutting machines. I realize this is excess, but I like to have all the things. Can I get an amen out there from some of you? Do you all like to have all the things? So the vertical and horizontal cutting, being able to do that with the Impress is great. I could probably use this metal shim in the Impress, but I haven't like experimented with that. So I don't wanna just do it right now. But um, it is great because you know those long like sentiment strip things that you cut? I find that if I run them through like sideways that the it doesn't shift down as much and my sentiments stay more centered so that was a lovely cracking sound we may have to nope we got it this time they're not the greatest of cuts but that's because I'm using a really thick acetate These are gonna be really hard for you guys to see, and I realize that, but that's the point is in the end so that they're really hard to see. <laughs> so we're gonna set that aside. I might have to run it through. It looks like that third one didn't quite cut. And I'm gonna start just layering these up. Now, I think that they intended these 
to be just used as a single. I might be wrong, but I thought it would be fun to just layer them up and just turn them to the side a little bit. And yes, it is sticking to my finger because I have the adhesive on the back. I'm just kind of offsetting these die cuts a little bit. I know they're small, but to where you see more, more palm. Your palm has more palm to it. <laughs> I'm glad to see I'm not the only one that has a lot of die cutting machines. I think that if I would um, experiment with cutting this material with my Empress a little bit more that I would probably find what works. Um, but I haven't done that. And I've had it for a while, actually. It's been my go-to kind of off camera for quite a bit. So I have three of these that I'm going to do. And having that adhesive on the back just makes this go a lot quicker. So I'm just picking it up. If you are not using tweezers in your craft room for all of these little things, then I don't even know what you're doing with your life. You need them. Any, any kind of crosslock tweezers are great to have in the craft room. Now, I think it would be also really fun, this is not something I would ever try to attempt live, but what I would love to try is to make actual tiny little pom-poms, like little yarn pom-poms to put on the top of this cake. I think that would be so much fun. Now, with my Gemini Junior, I do need a third little pick here. This time, I'm gonna put it on and I'm gonna cut into the metal. Yes, you can do it. You can do it if you are brave. And I'm gonna get a third pick out of that. Now I'm also going to layer up the hooray. Wow, that was a horrible sound. I'm gonna layer up the hooray as well to give it some dimension. And the reason I wanted to use such a thick acetate for these pom-poms or fireworks or sparklers is because I want them to stick up off the top of my cake really well. So I have those there. And then we're quickly going to layer up a couple of these hoorays as well. Hand extenders, yes, tweezers are hand extenders. I don't know, um, I am not to the point where I have any sort of like arthritis in my hands or anything like that, but is it something that's helpful for people with arthritis in their hands? Does anybody, can anybody out there speak to that for me? Maybe you know. Bye Lexi, thank you for joining me. My niece was on here. She used to come and craft with me in my craft room when she was just a wee thing. And I have a video where she's playing with a butterfly punch and it shows up on my Facebook memories about once a year. And I absolutely love it. So I don't know if um, stacking all these hoorays was like the best idea on my first live ever, but you know, go big or go home. Just gonna layer that up on the one that's already in the paper. And then I'm gonna peel both of them up at the same time and poke out the, poke out the chads. So who is watching the Super Bowl this weekend? Is anybody watching the Super Bowl this weekend? Are you invested in it? Are you there for the cake and the cookies? and the nachos and the wings, or is like your team playing? Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's the Eagles. Is it the Chiefs? Is the Chiefs the other team that's playing? Someone help me out. Let me know. And let me know who you're rooting for. I'm gonna go to a party for Super Bowl Sunday. I'm gonna watch it. Um, I'm probably going to watch the commercials. 
I mean, and I'm probably going to talk a lot. Oh, Rihanna. Yes. You know, someone told me Rihanna was doing the halftime show and I was like, I didn't even know Rihanna was still a thing, quite honestly. Like, or are we just going like retro vibe? Is that what's happening? I'm not real sure. <laughs> so I have two of these layered up. I'm going to go with a third. You know, this is maybe a little extra, but it's kind of one of those things where this is something I would do in my real life in crafting. So a little tedious, this I know, but you know what? Sometimes those little extra touches really make for a very special feeling card. Like I said, you could make this simpler. I don't know that simple is my jam most of the time. So I'm gonna have this right like that. Ooh, glitter. Now I chose a glitter cardstock because I know so many of you have glitter phobia and the idea of using like a loose glitter is just like, it just makes you lose your stuff. And so I try to find something that will <laughs> make it easy for you to get the glitter look without the glitter mess. Fly, eagles fly, that's what someone says. Now, I will tell you this, I think I only know who one of the quarterbacks is. I think it's Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs. Tell me if I am wrong. Now, I wanted to add just a touch of ink blending to the top of these, just so that they're not so stark white. So I am going to grab my sea glass ink and I am just going to quickly tap into that, tap off, and then blend in from the top on each of these layers. Just a touch of ink. I don't want um, it to like overwhelm the cake layer itself. I just want to define that edge just a bit. And it's just on the top edge where that confetti is. Now, you could totally do your confetti from the bottom of the layer up if that's what you choose. Um, there's no wrong way. You can do what you want to do. And the other thing is you could use the confetti along the edge of a card. So if that's something you'd rather do, use it on the edge of the card, you could totally do that. I just have to say, I'm super thrilled. Maybe I shouldn't say this until the very end. I'm going to wait and say what I'm going to say at the very end because I don't want to like, I'm a nurse and we're a little superstitious. I don't want to jinx anything. So I'm just adding a little adhesive to the tabs on these top two layers on the cake and I'm stacking them up. Now there is an interactive piece inside of this die set where you can use this as a pop-up inside of your card. Um, if you're going to do that, you probably don't want to add the third layer on there because I think it's going to stick out of the top of your card if you do that. So just keep that in mind. And then I am going to grab a little bit of like some really sticky adhesive to add my acetate picks onto the top of my cake here. So we're actually moving right through this. And I'm going to put one here. Isn't that magical? Look, just kind of flops around like that. I love this. And this is a great masculine color scheme. Now, if you, I know I'm a gold girl. You could make this in silver too, and the silver would look great with this color palette. So if you would, if you're a silver person, this would be great. I love that. I wasn't even expecting them to like dance around like that on the acetate, but that is so much fun. Now I have adhesive on the back of my hooray already. And so I'm just going to add just a touch more. I do also need to mention, speaking of things that I should have mentioned at the beginning, 
I do have a couple of fur babies that are home with me today and one of them just can't seem to be without me and she is my new puppy and she's here in the craft room with me. So if you hear like some weird gnawing noises, then it's probably her chewing on her toy, but I figured she'd be better behaved if I let her in the room than if I tried to keep her out of the room. So I am just going to stick this kind of straddled over the pom-poms just like that. And look at that. Isn't that cute? I love this. <laughs> yes, Charlie girl, she is way more than I bargained for. I'm not gonna lie, she's um, she's kind of a lot. <laughs> she is adorable, but she is um, she is a firecracker. And we went from a super chill dog, who's really he's only two years old, so he's not he's not old by any means. He still has lots of you know um, vivaciousness in him, but. I will tell you that he's chill and Charlie is, there's no, there's no chill in her. So I have these little cake frosting swirls. These, there are three different dies in the set. I love this because I don't have to cut the same die three times. I can do this all in one swoop. I'm going to die cut it out of that adhesive back glitter cardstock. Once again, I'm going to run it through my machine. And I'm gonna put those on the layers of the cake. Isn't this cute? I know a lot of you need masculine card designs and this is something that's easily replicatable if you take away some of the layering that I did. So, I'm gonna do this. And I was right, Charlie has a toy and she is going to gnaw on it, so. I apologize. I, I actually would kind of like to know if you guys can hear her doing that because she may need a place to go during lives. Charlie, by the way, is a mini Bernadoodle for the, the, those of you who don't know. And so um, she's much bigger than I expected her to be too. I've just gotten myself into all kinds of crazy antics with her. She, <laughs> she loves to be outside and we've had to completely block off our pool because she decided that she would start sticking her face in the pool. And <laughs> my husband called me at work one day and he's like, your dog is sticking her face in the pool. So we had to um, fix that. Now, I don't know um, if some of you feel like the glitter might take away a little bit of the masculine feel, but I think it just adds such a fun sparkle to the card. I like to add things that kind of catch the light. So the matte gold cardstock catches the light, the glitter catches the light, and this glitter cardstock, I'm just kind of poking these little things out right here. This glitter cardstock will kind of take on, it will kind of pull from the colors that you've used in the surrounding inks and the surrounding cardstocks and that sort of thing. So I think it's a nice neutral addition to this. If you wanted to go crazy, you could add it in gold cardstock instead but I decided to do the white. Now, the other thing about white cardstock that's, or this white glitter cardstock that's so cool is that you can actually use alcohol inks and change the color of it. So that's something really easy to do. You can customize it for any project that you're working on. Now, the rest of this card, once we get all of this assembly complete, is pretty easy. We are gonna do an easel design, but that's really easy to do. It's just an extra score line in your card base and just a little extra piece on the inside. So hopefully if you guys have any questions about that as I'm creating it, you can um, ask those. Metallic cardstock would look nice too. Yes, Carol, I think that would be beautiful. 
and someone thinks that men like sparkles too. I am so glad that men like sparkles too. Okay, so now I have my cake all assembled and ready. Now in the die set, there is this piece here. I'm gonna, I just kind of was playing with it beforehand, but do you see this piece underneath that I put my sentiment on? That comes in the die set. So if you wanted to take your cake and make it pop up on the inside of your card, you could use that interactive piece and when they open the card, it will fold flat. But see how I said with the three tiers, it would stick out the top and then it would just pop up on the inside of the card. So if you want to do this and you want to put it on the inside of the card, you might want to go with two layers or make a bigger card. You could totally do that. That's, a, that's an option as well. So let's set this aside and let's bring in my card base. I am going to use this piece here that's cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches. And I am going to score it at five and a half inches. Let me grab my bone folder here. And then I'm gonna divide that in two. I know this is math. Unfortunately, in my world, I am survi surrounded, survived by, I'm, <laughs> no, not that. I am surrounded by math lovers and math doers. My daughter is majoring in math. My husband has his bachelor's of science in math and he's a math teacher. So um, luckily, if I ever have any questions about math, I just ask them. But this one was easy enough for me to figure out on my own. Half of five and a half is two and three quarters. So I'm gonna go to this two and three quarter mark and I'm gonna score this as well. So that's half of my five and a half inch panel. And this is going to be the portion that I'm creating that easel. So I'm going to fold on that first line and then I am going to fold again on that second line. Now, when I do this, I'll be able to pop this up. I'm going to have this on a panel, pop this up and then it will stand up on the recipient's desk or mantle or kitchen counter, or if they are so mean and they put this in the trash can, it will stand up. Let me just tell you. <laughs> um, but I do want to add a little bit of texture to this card base. And so I am going to use the stitched stripe card front from Concord and Ninth. Now, I love this because I can do this on a card base it's not gonna cut an edge. So I can put this on any card front or card base and it's not going to cut my card base apart. So I'm just gonna kinda line this up, make sure I'm in a good position, I'll put it down on my magnet and then I'll run it through my die cut machine and that's just gonna give me those little stitch lines on my card front. Now I'm also going to do this on some sea glass cardstock and the sea glass cardstock is going to be kind of the um, backer piece for my cake on the front of the card. So you can see I have those beautiful lines on the front of my card. And then I am going to take and I'm going to put this on the sea glass cardstock. Now I am going to die cut the sea glass cardstock into a smaller piece to fit on the center, but I'll just put that there for now, run that through. And then I already picked the die that will fit on the front of this out of a nesting die set. So I'm just gonna do my best this is where I love to cut into the magnet because I can kind of just line it up in the center and it kind of sticks down on there. And then I'm just kind of doing my best to make sure the pattern is centered so that when I put it on my card front, like everything hopefully kind of lines up. We'll see, it may not. And then it's not the end of the world. Okay. I'm gonna run that through. Hi, 
Sherry. You're just joining. You just found me. Thank you so much for coming in. I'm so glad you're here today. This is actually my first live, so you're getting the real deal here. You're getting all of the um, experimentation. So this is going to go onto my card front just like this. Now, the key to this easel card design is, and look how beautifully those lines line up. Fabulous. You only want to put adhesive below this score line. So if I put it all the way up, my easel function cannot work. So I want to make sure that I'm just staying to the bottom portion of this when I put my adhesive on. So I'm going to just, now I'm very much an eyeballer. So I'm just going to kind of just figure out where I think halfway is, add some adhesive. And then I am going to adhere this right on to my card base. Now, if I messed up, it's not the end of the world. All right, perfect. I think I actually did pretty good. If I wanted to squirt some liquid glue in there, I could. Now this part, I am going to add on to this. It might stick up a little over my card base, but you know what? I'm okay with that. I'll just use a little bit bigger of a envelope to put it in. And honestly, most of the time I'm hand delivering cards anyway, so I'm not worried about dimension and postage and all that. I'm gonna take a panel of foam adhesive here. And I'm just gonna trim it down. I do have a video on my YouTube channel here. If you are interested, in knowing how I create this foam adhesive, there's a video on it. I know that not, I know it's not for everyone. Like I totally get that and that's fine. I've actually been enjoying it um, using my own like DIY foam adhesive here. I'm just gonna kind of see what I need to trim off here. I'm, a, I'm putting as much foam adhesive behind this as I can because I want it to be stable. And that's one of the things I like about this kind of fun foam, foam adhesive that I make myself is that it's like, it's thick, she thick. <laughs> oh, I crack myself up. This is real life people, real life. I laugh at myself. Thank you, Donna. So I'm just gonna do this. Just making sure you can't see the foam adhesive anywhere. I have a nice thick piece of adhesive behind that. It's going to stand up beautifully. I'm going to peel off the backer. Also, I did remember to put the trash can on the ground before I started. And recently, because of the little fur baby that we were talking about, about earlier, um, I have not been able to leave the trash can on the ground because she comes and eats things out of it. So <laughs> I did remember to put the trash can on the ground. I love this on the little acetate pieces. It's so much fun because they kind of dance around as you do it. Now there is adhesive on the back of this. So if you're worried about that, you could just touch it with your powder tool and that's gonna neutralize any of the exposed adhesive. But we need one more little piece on the inside of this card. Isn't this fun? this easel card design, we need one more piece on the inside of the card to kind of hold this in place. And that is where the markered turnabout comes in. I am going to use the have the best day. And honestly, now that I look at this, it says hooray. It doesn't have to be a birthday card. It could just be a celebration card, quite honestly. Um, and I'm going to bring in my Misty stamping tool here. I do turn this over to the back side just because I feel like it's easier for you guys to kind of see what's happening on that black background. Now the thing I was going to bring in are some enamel dots, but I don't have any aqua sky enamel dots. And so I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. We'll see. I really wanted to use aqua sky. So I am going to stamp this onto my cardstock here. 
And what color do I want? Hmm. Let's go. Oh, lemon juice on the top edges of the trash can can deter? I don't know if you know this dog. <laughs> know if she can be deterred she's uh it's a great tip and i may just actually have to try it but <laughs> just she has a mind of her own the, i mean this is the same dog that was sticking her head in the pool so you know i will try it lemon juice because i actually have some but i have a feeling she would just think it's just wonderful and she would just want to lick it more so I am doing this on my piece that has adhesive on the back and that's because I can just trim this down and then stick it right into my card base. I decided to go with the Peacock ink. A lot of you are saying dark blue. I went with the middle color. Peacock is just such a gorgeous teal blue color and I just, I love it. I love it so much. And rumor has it that there are more colors in the future. I don't, I'm not going to say anything more than that because I don't want to say anything that's going to get me in trouble. But so I'm going to trim this down. And the easiest way that I can trim this down and get some like even edges is this plastic ruler on my trimmer. I'm just going to put the last of the letter up against the edge, the right edge of that, and I'm just going to trim it down and I'll rotate and I'll do the same thing. So that's about right there. Turn it this way, trim it down just a little there. I'm just doing like a simple square. Now, the reason that I am not just stamping this on the inside of my card is I need something to hold my easel in place. And it doesn't have to have a lot of dimension, but there needs to be an edge that I can just place that easel against in order to, you know, keep it in place. So I'm going to kind of figure out where I want that edge to be. And then I'm just going to take, I mean, you really don't need. <laughs> Concord and Ninth is confirming the rumor. You've heard it from the source, people, that there are new colors coming. So I'm going to just figure out kind of where I want it to, to end up when it's in there. And then I'm just going to adhere this. Now, as I was saying before I read that comment and got all distracted, is that um, you don't need sheet adhesive for this, but I had it here and so I just used it. So I'm kind of getting to the point in my crafting. Look at that. That little edge just holds that up right there. So that's adhered on the inside of my card. And that holds my easel card in place, just like that. I'm getting to the point in my crafting where I'm just like, I need, I need it to be easier. I don't want to like skip the things that make it special, like the acetate and the metallic cards and the, you know, dimension that I've added by layering up the, the die cuts and stuff like that. I don't want to skip that, but I need ways to make it easier. And so for me, if that is using a little bit, slightly more expensive sheet adhesive, then that's something I'm totally okay with because I just, I need, I need easy stuff in my life. I am, I think I can, can I say when, Greg and Lindsay could text me if they want to, if they can say when th those colors are releasing. Um, I have my phone here, Greg and Lindsay, if I can say when those are releasing or if you wanna say in the comments as well. Um, but I'm a busy girl. And so um, I need things to be easy sometimes. And so if I have to spend a tiny bit more on some adhesive that makes my life a little easier in the long run, then I, I'm just to that place where I'm like, I'm okay with it. Um, I am a nurse. For those of you who don't know, I work in the pediatric department and I also float to the neonatal ICU at times and work there. So I deal with small people and babies. So I have a job outside of that. I'm highly involved in other things like in my church and stuff like that. So like I said, sometimes when I come in here, I don't want to have to um, think about that. And 
I realize that that's not everybody and everybody's season is a little bit different, but this will definitely work with some tape runner adhesive too. But sometimes if you want to just um, make things a little easier, you can adhesive back your cardstock and create that. So if I had some uh, sea glass little things, I think I would add them. I'm not even, I think these came from a Concord and Ninth summer card camp here. Um, I could try these. I don't know if this color is just right. And I'll show you that um, the way that they come, the, I had pulled these out because I thought I was going to do classic Carissa color palette. And these little tiny ones just blend in so well to the little confetti that I thought they would be perfect. But like I said, I don't have the sea glass ones. And so I pulled these out just in case I went a different direction. Oh yeah, these might work. And I don't even know for sure what color these are considered. But I thought maybe I would just sprinkle a few of these in here to where they look like, like a little candy dot decoration. If they were glitter, I mean, that might be the best thing ever, but they're not. <laughs> Can I have some glitter sea glass drops, please? <laughs> So that, I'm just going to finish off putting these on here. I don't know if you guys really want to watch this part. It's just um, picking them up off the sheet and placing them on there. I like to do, everybody has like their little method of like how they place embellishments. I like to think in triangles. And so um, this probably is not the best example of how I would normally do it because I'm working in three layers here. But I always like for there to be like some sort of triangle kind of connecting all of my elements together. So that's, um, and I usually work in odd numbers. So because I'm putting three on each layer, that's my odd number there. Normally I do like two groupings of three kind of scattered on my card. So at design principle, I think that is considered a design principle. I have no formal training in design. So, you know, it, this is uh, just years of experimenting and listening to other people. So what I want you guys to do, would Wink of Stella work on these dots? No. I don't think so because um, I think it would just slide off because these are enamel and there's nothing to really grab it. You know what I'm saying? I think it would just like rub off. So I think we're going to call it good there. What do you think? I love this card. I love that it you can change up the color combination. You can use it for masculine or feminine. Um, it works for both. This could also make a great wedding card. If you know wedding colors, um, you could make, you could do this entire cake out of some glitter cardstock and that could be really fun as well. It could make a great, um, like bridal shower card. It's great for any celebration, right? A cake is always there when we celebrate. So I'm going to go ahead and flip back to my front camera here. Be sure to visit me at sprinkledwithglitter.com. If you're not already subscribed over there, you can go to the bottom of that homepage. You can enter your email address and you'll get an email every time I post. I don't share your information with other people. You can also follow me uh, on Instagram at Carissa Wiley. So it's one R and two S's, W-I-L-E-Y. So right now I wanna go ahead and go to the comments and see if there's anything you guys would like to know. I think we have officially survived our first live. Audrey says, it's gorgeous. Thank you so much, Audrey. I really appreciate that. Kelly loves the easel function. I love that too. I think it's a fun kind of different way to add something fun to your card. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of my face here. Um, let's see. I have missed that laugh. D, thank you so much. <laughs> it's good to have found you. Again, I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you. You know, 
my laugh is not something that I plan to do, but it just comes out. And so I'm so glad that that's something that you enjoy. Linda Wood says it's wonderful. Lisa Parker, great card and fun live made for a fun hour this afternoon. I'm so glad you could join me here. Kathy Zilski says great live. Thank you, Kathy. That means a lot coming from you. And I want to just say thank you again sincerely for your help with this. I did a lot of um, online research, but it's nice to have a friend that you can just ask a quick question to as well. This was so much fun. Thank you, Concord and Ninth. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day on a release day, no less, to be here with me, supporting me. I really appreciate that. Uh, let's see, Tabby Cat says, fantastic. I hope that this is something that um, you guys will try on your own. And just remember that this is something that um, I've just changed up the colors. Like I said, I had a totally different, I was playing with it. This is not a, um, it, it's a very rough version of what I was doing today, but I was kind of playing ahead of time. And so this would be your classic Carissa color palette. I don't Love the margins on this here. I'm sure Kathy would agree with me. Can we rewatch later? I came in late. Yes, this will be available on my YouTube channel so you can check it out. You can check it out from the beginning. My laugh is my trademark along with the glitter. Thank you, Patricia. Um, I just realized who it was. Patricia and I went to a um, retreat together in October and she is a doll and she has a party poodle. So thanks, Carissa. So fun. I'm so glad you were here, Sandra. I love that all of you came out to support me today to be here. Like I said, this really means so much to me that you are here um, giving me a good showing, giving me lots of interaction and feedback in the comments as well. I'm just, I feel really grateful for this audience here, for this community here. And I've been wanting to do this live thing for so long and I finally just did it. I finally did it and there will be more of this coming. Um, I do want to mention that I will not have a regular live schedule. And the reason for that is I have a schedule that changes every single week. So my nursing job, Sometimes I work Monday and Friday, and sometimes I work Friday and Saturday, and sometimes I work Tuesday and Wednesday. I mean, it's all over the place. I never have like a set schedule. And so I can't really, you know, say I can be here live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. I just can't do it. So my plan for lives is to schedule them in advance, put them in my planner, try to let you guys know about it as soon as I can, and just show up when I can show up live because I think this is a great way to just get to know all of you, to interact with all of you, and um, just to be able to chat and really build community here. So I really appreciate you being here. Um, and with that, I think, I think we're done. We made a card. We did it in less than an hour and there was a lot going on on this card. And so I'm really happy. So um, thanks again for watching. You can catch the replay. Visit me over at my blog. Visit me on Instagram. I'm so happy you're here. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on the notifications here on my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my card making and paper crafting video tutorials. Thanks again, and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.